Welcome to Plot Up a Scotsman, real quick. This is the piece that we're gonna be going over. Show you some of the techniques to put it together. Part two, we'll be painting it, but this is part one, so we're just gonna go over this. Real quick, if you wanna see sneak peeks of things like this, I am starting to do stories on our Instagram account, Plot Up a Scotsman. And if you wanna go over there, uh, I, would, I do stories of my progress as I'm doing these builds. So you're more than welcome to go over there and check those out. And that's also where I'm gonna eventually post project pictures and things like that. Project pictures, progress pictures and things like that. But anyway, let's jump into this and get this build. And uh, if you have any questions, don't know why I said that, but let's go. This is 0 0.04 sheet styrene. I was gonna use XPS foam, but I decided not to because I think I'm gonna be attaching a lot of plastic to this and I don't know how I would do that with uh, using foam. So I decided to go with this uh, sheet styrene. So this is well on number three. I've used several other builds before. I've already cut some supports out and what I like to do is just grab a support. Let's go ahead and attach this first, which is what I should have done in the first place. This is just a support to help keep it up straight up and down. It doesn't take what long for the weld on to actually adhere. It does take a long time to cure, probably up to 24 hours if you're gonna sand it or do anything drastically with it. This is just to make sure my wall stays straight up and down. So I'm just aligning the back of this support to the side of that plastic is all I'm doing. And since this is 0.4, is it 0.04 inches? Anyway, since it's a rather thick sheet styrene, I will eventually have to come back and do it a little bit more just to make sure it glues. And then just line that up, make sure it butts up against there. I'm gonna actually do it on the side a little bit so I can actually, I just remembered I had this, so I'm going to use this to help me support it better. So now I can, don't have to worry about it sliding around. And actually, if I want to, I can even be sneakier and do a magnet. Do a magnet on the back side, like so. Make sure it's pinned up against there. And then if I really want this to make sure it's flat, grab another magnet there. And there, and it'll pin the plastic down so it's all nice and snug as bug on the rug. It'll also help too that I, I do this on the metal now that I'm thinking about because I have glued a piece of plastic to my green mat before, which is always fun. Yeah, so you don't want to do that. But anyway, this is kind of the gist. What I'll do is I'm just going to show you this one and then I'm going to go around and do all the rest of them. I'm also probably going to cut some windows and different things out of, out of this too, uh, but I'll get to that. And this little cut off corner piece right here is going to be where the door's at. Always make sure you cover this up. It does like to evaporate quickly. And you can also use, there's all kinds of other glues you can use. I just happen to like this Weld On 3 stuff. All right, I lied. I, felt, I feel like this is important to show too. So this is some styrene as well. And what I'm doing is I'm just framing the window on the inside. And I'm gonna use the same piece that I cut out. So I'm just kind of putting the lip in here just a little bit. So it just kind of insets a little bit so this will rest on top, like so. That way I can utilize my plastic. I don't have to keep wasting plastic. I just put that on top of that. And all I'm doing is just eyeballing it, making sure this is kind of flush. I just had an old friend of mine challenge me to uh, build some Nec Necron terrain, so I might be doing that. I, sounds like he might have some Necrons. So I might have to look into that and do that. And then just kind of indent a little bit, like so. Get my fingers out of the way so you can actually see it. Inset it a little bit. It's gonna kind of put some pressure on it. Get some weld on number three. Dip my paintbrush in it and 
apply. I want to keep pressure on it for a few minutes just to let the weld on adhere well enough to where it's going to keep it together. When I say a few minutes, I don't mean that long. Now that's in there, just going to apply the weld on. What I've done is I've cut some more sheet styrene out. Yeah, hard to guess that. And it's going to go on like this over top of that. And then there'll be another level here. But what I want to do is I want to have a little layer or a little kind of like that. So I want to put a trim in here. So I'm going to make some pieces in here like I did down here, but they need to be smaller for support so I can wrap it some sheet styrene around that. One thing to do with this though too is I filed the edges so they're smooth on both sides. Uh, not smooth, but rounded so they're not a crisp edge. And I think this looks better that way when it's an edge piece. And so that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do now is cut some sheet styrene out and use this nifty little tool right here and just make some pieces. Just an easy way to cut. And then when I'm done with that, I can line these up from corner to corner like so. And then cut them. Then I have some support pieces. Not that, pretty simple. And I only use this tool, plastic, so it keeps my edge nice. But that's what I'm gonna do is I'm make a bunch of these. All right, this is a 0 0.03 inches thick and this is 0 0.04 inches thick. Anyway, I cut a piece of this. It's a 3 8 inch, 3 8 <laughs> inch. Th uh, thick and so this is already glued in and now what I'm just going to start doing right here is just wrapping this around as I wrap it around I just want to kind of keep pressure on it I don't want to do it all at once and just kind of do one rib at a time and make sure I'm going on, on my line that I've already drawn and I just want to keep pressure and like I said before, it's not gonna, I can give it a few minutes and it'll be uh, fairly adhered, especially if I keep going around, it'll be fine. And just like before, once it's all um, said and done. I do, I do want to go back and just do the ribs again, just kind of a, a second coat, just to make sure it's really on there, just because this is a little bit thicker sheet styrene. I thought I had thinner styrene, but I don't, so I'm gonna have to go buy some. I must have used it all up. Didn't know I did that. And right here at the end, it goes past this line a little bit. That's okay, because I want the other one to butt up against it. That way I can cut it off and sand it and give it a smoother look. Like I said, I'm just gonna go back, especially since I didn't get the one side. Oh, that one's not even touching, so push that one in. I also don't want it pooling like I did right there, so I wanna wick it up with my brush and move it on to the next one. Anyway, when you put ribs inside here like this, it just makes it a little bit easier to uh, create your corner and your, your rounded edge easier because you have something to support up against. Anyway, I wanna finish these walls right here and then they're gonna have to dry for a little bit before I can cut them off and sand them. See how this is overlapped right here? That way I can cut that down and sand it when it's all dry and give it a smoother edge. So that's what I'm gonna have to do here as well. This, this is overlapped right here and it's dry enough to sand. So I'm gonna cut this off right now and just get as close as I can. I don't wanna go really close though, because obviously I don't wanna have a big old gouge out of it and then not be able to fix it. And this kind of, I obviously just work it down and the idea is once it's flat with this, it's kind of rounded off. And I've already done it over here and here, just to tip me to do a test run. The nice thing is right here, so you can kind of see, how, I don't know if you can in, in there, but it's a little bit shiny because of the glue. And so when I get to the point where it's level with this, I know I'm getting really level as I start to remove that shiny part. This is the technique I'm gonna use on everything else. So I won't bore you with doing all of them and showing you all of them. This is just the only one I'm gonna show you. That's why I overlap it because if you glue it on the inside and outside, it creates a really good bond and melts the plastic together. 
and then you can get a really nice corner and you can most of the time I can hide the seams if I'm really careful and pay attention to what I'm doing and not rushing it to where it looks like it's really blended. Anyway, that's what it looks like when it's all finished and all done. Just a nice smooth edge. All right, I've been a little bit busy. So I made some of these, which is this right here. Just the same principle. Uh, put the little supports on the inside, glue the, the plastic together, sand the edges, and then I just put some uh, sheet styrene, not sheet styrene, blocks, I don't even know what it's called. Rod styrene, uh, square solid styrene. <laughs> and then I just kind of made a window, just brought, brought it out instead of actually going in. I brought everything out, you know, put a couple pipes in there. Right here, was, there was a little bit of gap, so I just threw a sheet, piece of styrene in there to cover it up. And if I was to, it, look, it looks on purpose, uh, or maybe not, but I don't to Kind of give it that idea. And just to show that a miniature can fit in there. And that's what kind of what it's geared for, is this is the kind of size of the miniatures that I'm aiming at, is Infinity and uh, Reality's Edge. But now what I'm gonna do is I, on this side over here, I found a Tiger Tank, uh, I think it's 135 135th scale. And I'm just gonna, oh, I'm gonna have to trim that off. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of surgery on that. And that one too. Uh, actually, it sloped right here, so I can probably do it at the top to bring it up. So I'll probably do it up here. But anyway, I'm gonna glue those there. I'm gonna do a little doctoring, get it in frame, I apologize. I'm just eyeballing it for now. And then I'm just gonna try to cut that off. <sighs> See if that did anything. Uh, brought it in a little bit closer. I think I can fire, uh, use a emery board. Anyway, that's the idea. I'm gonna put this one over here to frame that in. And then on this side right here, I built this wider piece to put in here. I just kind of wanted to have a, the building be a different shape. And I'm gonna off-center it. I don't wanna have it centered. I'm gonna have it off-centered a little bit when I glue it on. I'm gonna do that. I don't wanna press to it in here too much because I'll bow it, I don't wanna bow it. But I do wanna press down over here. And the other thing too is, even those flat surfaces, I do wanna leave some flat surfaces for greeblies. At the end, I do have, I wanna put a lot of greeblies on this. All right, gonna give a low down on what's going on. So, did more, did the top part, and I've done some framing in down here. This piece cut out, uh, just kind of trace the top and uh, I don't care if there's a gap because you won't see it when it's all done. And then this part just kind of framed it in so I can put a piece like this. So this is kind of a ridge piece. Uh, sheet styrene has this ridges on it. And what I'm gonna do is just glue this here and wrap it around. What I'll do is I'll glue, every, I'll glue the straight part here so this is all sturdy on this side. And then as it dries, then I'll wrap it around and glue it over here. And then I have another piece right here that I'll just continue on. And then I have a roof, which goes up here. And what I'm gonna do on this is, I lined up this part up with this part, and I will get a thinner uh, styrene right here. And I'm gonna put a straight uh, piece inside here that'll frame it. And I'm gonna try to wrap it around, and so it's just a, a rounded edge, and then it'll attach on the straight piece. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not sure, this is the first time. I just kind of wanted to try it and experiment and see if I can pull it off. But if I don't, then oh well. We'll try something else. Just gonna kind of line it up, make sure it's flush. If it's sticking out a little bit, that's okay. On that side, I don't care because I'm gonna end up gluing it down. So I just kind of want to make sure I pinch everything straight. Everything looks good. And didn't have anything on my brush, so that's a problem and just glue this part right here. This is what I wanna make sure I hold down and make sure it's good to go before I move on to the next part. I'm also gonna glue underneath too, as soon as this is strong enough, and then I'll glue it underneath here. Now I'll probably be impatient, and it could very well pop off. But, ooh, it didn't. Okay, so this is all there and made it over to the supports on this side 
Everything looks good, it's all wrapped around. And now I'm gonna do this. Make sure I press the top down. And I wanna go all the way to the end. I'm gonna kinda of hold this before I try to really get the angle underneath here, just cause I wanna make sure it's really solid before I start playing around and lose my focus. In this case, I want to as many contact points as I can or as many places I can glue as possible just to make sure it's sturdy and see how that go too soon so it didn't adhere. And this is where the most pressure is going to be, so this is where I'm going to have to hold it the longest. Okay, so what I've done is I've glued this on here. It's a really thin piece of, I think it's zero, it's point zero one inch. And then I cut these uh, so they bend individually. And all I'm doing is just kind of bending one down at a time. And as I do, I'm just going to run the paintbrush in between the two and then pin it down. And that's kind of what I did on the other piece. Oh, I need to slide it more in picture. My bad. I used to use uh, work on such tall buildings. And then this one, I'm going to do the same thing. And it's going to overlap a little bit just because it's curved, which is fine. That's what I want it to do. But I want to make sure I get it on all the edges. Just hold that down. And my finger's dirty. Oh, it's the pencil lead. And then I'm gonna do it here too. Make sure I get on all the edges. I don't know any other way to do this to where it's a curved edge, so this is just a experimentation to see if this works. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. The idea behind it is I'm gonna sand it all when it's all done. That's why I wanna make sure all the edges are glued on. And then the middle one is the last one I want to do. So lucked out, wanted an odd number, wanted the last one to be in the middle to overlap all of them. So I lucked out, and that's what it looks like. So what I'll do is I'll sand that down. I'm going to paintbrush over some more, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this trim here. It's not going to go all the way down like I did here. So I'm just going to do an outer edge right here along these and finish those up. This is 1.5 millimeter half rounds or 0 0.060 zero inches half rounds. And I've done this on this side right here. Just put some of those up and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you how to do it on this side. And I'm just eyeballing it because I don't care if it's perfect or not and I just lost my piece. And I'm just gonna get some weld on and use my brush and kind of go in between like that. It tends to bind better when you get both sides uh, with the weld on, on it. Do it up here as well. Hold that down, put my finger on it so you can't see it. I'm gonna kind of pinch that off right there and just take my X-Acto knife. And I don't care if it's exact, I just don't want it to be right, right flush. I'll come back when it's all dry and I'll sand it off. It's essentially it. Now let's hold that down, make sure it stays. And then I'm gonna do the rest. What I'm gonna start doing now is I wanna start doing some pipe work. Like I wanna run some pipe from here and just kind of up to here and just kind of start doing miscellaneous pipe work all over. So I'm just gonna kind of show you the initial. I've done this on other projects before, but uh, parental supervision required because you are messing with flames and can burn yourself. Anyway, I sand this so it's smooth and I marked a line on it. I'm just gonna kind of warm it up a little bit. It's kind of hovered above the, the flame itself and I want it to bend in this particular spot. Now, normally, I mean, you can also make a jig if you want and do the same thing. But I don't care if it's exactly perfect. Anyway, it's not quite doing what I want. All right, it's a little shy. So, and I'm putting it on the table too, so it will uh, be flat, or at least flat this way. And then you can snap it. Once you snap it, just get some emery board, flatten out the one side that you're gonna glue up against the wall. And I have pipe. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do some more pipe work, and then we'll go to that point. Okay, so what I've been doing is I've just been putting a border on and kind of the same as before, not, nothing great. Well, I shouldn't say nothing great. Nothing unusual compared to what I've already been doing. 
this material has a little bit of a ridge on it, teeny tiny bit, not very noticeable at all. But what I'm doing now is I'm just cutting this out. And when I do, I want it to go beyond the edge. So it's not, uh, even with the edge, I want it to go overlap. So when I put this piece bun up against this way, it'll do over here, so they overlap. So when I sand them, they become smooth. See how that one's kind of overlapped a little bit? Um, it, that way when I sand it, it's smooth. So that's what I've been doing. Okay, I've kind of debated if I should go any further, but I think I'm gonna be done. So these are from, I cut these off of the top of a bulldog tank. I think this is just a drum for a, a, a quad, a quad. 50 132nd scale. This is a uh, 132nd scale piece to a Tiger tank, uh, shoulder pads, Space Marine, this piping. This is also from the Bulldog tank. This right here is the barrel to the Bulldog tank, just half of it. Uh, I thought it looked good coming down and just uh, didn't glue it together, so it's just right up and get flat against the wall. This is the nose prop to a, I'm not sure if it's a Hinkle. I can't remember. And then this is part of just bulldog tank, bulldog tank. Bulldog tank with some styrene on tank, bulldog tank. Um, same with this, bulldog tank. And then just different pieces of styrene. This is a cat. I can't remember inside cat five, no. Anyway, that's to wire a uh, cat cable. Bulldog, bulldog. That I believe is to, to a Tiber Tiderium shuttle. Necrons, just a piece of wood. Uh, bulldog, back of the Right here is the exhaust uh, to a Tiger, where the cowlings go on to it. Just right here, and then the cowlings go over top. These pieces right here go over top of it, it's Tiger tank. And then that's a, oh, I think that might be a 75, or a, I don't know, it might be a British gun, uh, anti-tank gun. And then just made some different things. And I don't remember where these come from, this right here is the engine to a Tidarium shuttle. I've had it for years and years and I just um, found something to do with it. So I think I'm done. Put some styrene things here, did some styrene uh, pieces here. Uh, just put a plate there just to break it up. Uh, this is just tubing, just a cut a piece of tubing off, glued it on. Bent some more tubing here. Um, did some more styrene here, right here. Just to kind of break it up, give it some decorative, another uh, tubing. On these right here, because they're kind of isolated by themselves, I did uh, make a hole with my X-Acto knife and just kind of whittled the pipe down so it fit in really snug. And then I used Weld on 3 to use it to glue it on. And then just more styrene, um, like styrene here and just different things. Added a styrene strip right here, just to break it up, give it some character and same over here, that's, well, that's a half sixteenth tubing piece, styrene, just a strip here and started just did some leftovers, but I think I'm done. I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow after this and see how it goes and prime it and start painting. And that'll be part two. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video on this and got something out of it and can take it and use it in your own personal hobbies. Uh, it was a fun build. There's one thing I forgot to mention is on this part right here on the, on the roof. This was a tube. I think it was a quarter inch tube. Before I wrapped this around it, I put it on there because I wanted the front part to be rounded. So there was a tube I glued down. I didn't mention that. And also I did sand this right here. You can still kind of see some of the seams in it, but that is what it is. One thing I want to note too about the hobby and this channel we are changing something. This channel is gonna be exclusively hobbies now. It's gonna be tutorials and things like that. Everything dedicated to hobbies. And big footing, squatching, and other things that we used to do is all gonna to go to a new channel called Plapa Scotsman Clan. And if you wanna see that type of stuff, or the other things we do, uh, it's gonna be on that channel. So if you, you can go over there and subscribe. Uh, if you wanna leave a comment down below, if you have any questions, feel free. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy the channel and what the content's on here, Hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the notification bell so you get notifications when we put things up. And oh, so at the beginning of the video, I also mentioned I mentioned Instagram. I want to emphasize that again that when I do a build like this, uh, in the night I'm working on, I'm going to put up a story on Facebook, on Instagram, and that will be kind of a sneak peek thing. It lasts for 24 hours, so if you want to see the stories there, you can hop over on Instagram at Platypus Scotsman and see us there as well. We also have a Facebook 
a group called Plapus Scotsman Lounge. We have a Facebook page called Plapus Scotsman. And um, I've gotten some personal requests for friends on Facebook to my personal account. Uh, if you want a friend request me, uh, we do have a new account called Plapus Scotsman. Uh, friend request that one and uh, that's where uh, I uh, have my hobby centrist group uh, as far as a uh, uh, friending there is concerned. Uh, also we have, if you really like the channel and you want to support us over on Patreon, we have a Patreon page and uh, support us there and you can be part of our Discord group when you sub when no matter what tier uh, you do, we have a Discord group that you can be uh, participate in as well. You have a wonderful night. Hope uh, your hobby is treating you well and hope you got something out of this. And I'm pretty much it. I can't think of anything else to say. So you have a good one. And remember what my mother used to always say that anyone can do art. Ciao. Bye. See y'all.